Italia is just five days away from its start in Budapest. The road to victory in this race has been with Neo's Grenadiers for three of the past four editions, led here by 2019 winner Richard Carapaz. The Ecuadorian, as the best rider on arguably the strongest team, is perhaps the de facto favorite, not least because of his consistency over three weeks. When he turns up in a leadership role, he never falls short of his own standards, and that might be enough to carry him to another pink jersey in Verona, particularly when he is flanked by riders of the caliber of Richie Port and Pavel Sivakov at Neo's Grenadiers. Carapaz's rivals will not be cowed by the team's collective strength, particularly those with unfinished business in Italy. At first, Simon Yates, Bike Exchange Jaco, appeared to be winning the Gyro in 2018, after three pink stages wins, each more stylish than the last, only for his race to unravel dramatically on the Col del Finestre. He hasn't quite managed to do anything similar in the years since, but he still possesses the finesse to do so. The 2017 winner, Tom Dumoulin, Jumbo Visma, returns to Italy looking to rediscover himself as a Grand Tour rider. The Fetchman has only raced intermittently this season and the lack of time trial kilometers is not in his favor, but he has a special relationship with this race and his endeavors will be one of the subplots to follow. So, too, will be the development of his teammate, Tobias Foss, who was ninth a year ago. At Bahrain Victorias, Miguel Landa is linked by Pelo Bilbao and Vag Powells, and Bora Hansgrove takes a multi-pronged approach with Wilco Kelderman, Jai Henley, and Emmanuel Bouchemont. UAE Team Emirates, meanwhile, are backing Joa Almeida, who helped justify the lofty ambitions after his sparkling debut in 2020. Roman Bardet, DSM, returned to the gyro after finishing 7th a year ago, when he seemed liberated, and a tour of the Alps victory highlights his form. His young teammate, Timon Rensman, is a writer of considerable potential. Given the scarcity of time trials, Miguel Angel Lopez, a sonic at a stage winner in Austria, may never have a better chance to win a Grand Tour. Hugh Carthy, F Education Easy Post, will set out with similar motivation. Guillaume Martin, Go Fides, tends to enjoy racing in Italy and should relish the gyro. It will be fascinating, too, to see how Vincenzo Nibali fares in what looks destined to be his final appearance. A third victory is beyond him, but a cameo from the Astana Kazakhstan rider can be expected all the same. Instead, his former teammate Giulio Ciccone, Trek Segafredo, will lead the home hopes, eager to make amends after a crash last year when it his podium challenge. Every contender, it seems, has a compelling backstory, and the dramatic arcs are not limited to the GC men. Watch you, Vander Poel, Alpes and Phoenix, and Ben Younger May, Antoine Rocher Wani Gobert, will be among those buying for the first Molly Rose of the race, while Mark Cavendish returns to the gyro after nine year absence. He is frustrated with his position in the quick step out of the vinyl fold. His presence, along with KLF UN, Lato Seidel, Arnaudemar, Groupama FDJ, and Fernando Gaviria, UAE Team Emirates, has the potential to increase the intensity of each bunch sprint. No, this year's epic doesn't have one dominant figure, at least from the outset, but therein lies a large part of its intrigue. 184 riders set out from Budapest, eager to make the race, but mindful, too, that this race could make them. A gyro of seemingly boundless possibilities awaits. The Gyro d'Italia 2022 route. Statistics only reveal so much about a Grand Tour. The proof is in the racing, after all, but one figure stood out when the fourth Gyro d'Italia route 2022 was finally announced. The 26.3 kilometers against the clock on this year's course is the lowest amount in any gyro since 1963, when Franco Baumamian claimed victory in a race without any time trials at all. That curiosity, allied to the 51,000 meters of total altitude gain across the three weeks, suggests a race tilted firmly in favor of the climbers. A closer inspection, however, shows that this gyro is not quite as brutally straightforward as that either. As per tradition, the third week features some mammoth mountain days, but the gyro's climbing meters are well distributed across the three weeks, and in some unexpected places, too, such as the circuit in the hinterland of Naples on stage 8. And, all the while, the vagaries of Mayweather, not to mention a peloton without an obvious pajoni, could conspire to produce plot twists all along the course. Part 1, Week 1. The gyro sets out from Hungary, and the race begins with an uphill finale in Vichigrad that seems to favor finishers rather than pure sprinters. 24 hours later, the GC contenders face their first examination in Budapest with a 9.2 km time trial across the chattering Danube towards another hilltop finale. The time gaps won't be enormous, but they will be informative. The Hungarian expedition concludes on the shores of Lake Volaton with an adding for the sprinters before the gyro caravan takes an early rest day, before the long transfer south to Sicily. Sicily was once a rarity on the gyro route, but this is the race's fourth visit in six years. There is a seemingly obligatory summit to finish atop Mount Etna. It offers a slight variation by blending the approaches of 2011 and 2018. The second day in Sicily brings the race to Messina, which serves as both a sort of homecoming and a sort of farewell for Vincenzo de Bali. The sprinters should be at the fore here, as they will be across the strait the following day, when the race snakes up the Calabrian coast to Scaly on stage 6, but the terrain grows rather more rugged for the remainder of the gyros foray through the deep south. Stage 7 to Potenza is one of the most deceptively difficult of the entire race, with the climbs of the Paso Cala, Monte Sirino, a favorite finish in the 1990s, Monte Scuro, and La Zalata preceding a hilly finale in Potenza. Any undercooked or unprepared contender could pay a heavy price here. A day later, the gyro returns to Naples for the first time in nine years for a brief but potentially explosive stage. The 153 kilometers black starts and finishes on the seafront, but the key action will come in the Volcano Combi flagrate to the west of the city, with the race taking in five laps over the short but tricky Monte di Procida. The opening weeks draw to a close in Abruzzo, where another 5,000 meters or so of climbing are packed into 191 kilometers. The climbs of Ryanero San Edigo, Rock Castle, and the Paso Lanciano precede the demanding finale on the Black Hoss. It is tackled with the same Rocamora's approach that made its memorable debut in 2017. Part 2, Week 2. Not for the first time, context is everything in the second week of the gyro. In theory, the succession of long and hilly stages invites attacks from inventive general classification contenders, but this phase of the race could just as easily see a series of early breakaways succeed. No matter, stage 10 from Piscard to Jesse will call for vigilance, given that it comes immediately after a rest day. After a flat opening, the terrain becomes more rugged in the second half, including the ascent to Iconati, and a passage through Filatrono, the home of the late, girl winner, Michelle Scarponi. 
The sprinters will be in the spotlight in Reggio Emilia and Cuneo, but those opportunities will be separated by a day for Puners to Genoa on stage 11. The round features the Paso del Baco, where, Belgium's motorway lands tragically lost his life in the 2011 gyro, while the Valencoti Transco proceeds the truck towards the finish. The gyro's third weekend, meanwhile, begins with an intriguing stage around Torrent, where the group of takes in two laps over the Col della Maddalena and Superga before a finish on the banks of the Po. A day later, the race heads into the Alps for a taste of the final week. The category one ascents of Mafleur and Drog receive a summit finish at Cogn in the Grand Paradiso National Park. The gradients may not be the stiffest, but some 46 kilometers of the final 80 kilometers will be uphill, and the sheer volume of climbing will weigh on the legs. Part 3, Week 3, The Big Finish. The gyro resumes after its final rest day with one of its most arduous stages. A trio of Category 1 ascents punctuate Stage 16, with the goal at Odique Dino in the Mortolo preceding the stiff final climb of Santa Cristina and the drop to the finish in Abruca. The Mortolo is climbed from its Chitoloreto approach, but there's nothing mild about this stage, which totals 5,540 meters of climbing. The Santa Cristina was the scene of Marco Pantani's dismissal of Miguel Negrón in the 1994 gyro and, inevitably, it has been branded as the Montagra Pantani on the 2022 route. Another date in the high mountains follows of stage 17, which takes in the Paso del Tornel and Paso del Variolo before the steep, hairpin saw Pa del Mador, which brings the race up the Kaiser Jagerwick, the road laid out by Austro-Hungarian troops during the First World War. An undulating, 8 kilometers plateau over the top serves as an epilogue before the finish in Laverne. There is some respite on stage 18, with a largely flat run to Treviso, but stage 19 between Friuli and Slovenia is testing. With the Category 1 ascent of Monte Colo Rot, it climbs for 10 kilometers at almost 10%, with an uphill finish at Castle Monte. The summit of the gyro, however, is reserved for the final weekend, when the race crosses above 2,000 meters in altitude for the first time. The Paso San Pellegrino is followed by the Chima Copi, the highest point of this gyro, the 2,239 meters high Paso Bordeaux. The finish, meanwhile, is on the fearsome Paso Feda Aya, where the notoriously steep and straight section at Malga Chapel could turn the gyro on its head right at the last minute, beneath the striking precipice of the Marmolada. On the final day, the 17 kilometers time trial in Verona, a place and history awaits for the Malia Rosa winner.